The Rise of a Star began in 2007, with a little thing called Hatsune Miku that was introduced to the world. Aside from a large amount of resignations in the Japanese government, including from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the world spun on in 2007. This would not be the last time that Mr. Abe would see public office, and is currently Prime Minister of Japan once again at time of recording. But enough of that, let's get in the robots. Gurren Lagann takes place in a world where beast men rule the surface of the earth and maintain control with giant mecha. Humans live underground and employ diggers to open up further space to live, two of whom are Shimon and Kamina, our protagonists. After digging up a gunman mecha all their own, they go on a rampage to try and free society from Lord Genom, meeting all sorts of Gainax-style weirdo characters along the way. Gurren Lagann became extremely popular with Super Robot fans who were looking for something more manic and wacky than the typical Super Robot fare, and with people who had never really seen a mech show before. Some people may note the distinct similarities between this and Getter Robo plot-wise, but overall the fan reaction was positive on both sides of the pond. Currently available in the States from Aniplex. Gundam 00 launched to acclaim and is most readily described as Gundam Wing for a post-9-11 world. It demonstrated a much better understanding of the globalized world and the effects of terror attacks, though in this case, the same terrorists were the pilots we were following after. It also bears the interesting mark of being the first Gundam show to be intentionally aired under 52 episodes, running at a svelte 26, with Gundam 00 Season 2 being considered a separate entity, despite remaining in the same universe. It was brought over to the States by Bandai, and was then re-released by Nozomi in 2018. If you thought Ava got dark, Bokurano would like a word. Fifteen children are chosen to test a game featuring a giant robot called Zerth against fifteen different invading aliens. But nothing as explicitly as it seems. Where the invaders are coming from, what the mecha is made out of, and the mystery of the whole situation gets darker by the second. The cost of defending Earth is put on the shoulders of kids that barely understand what they're doing, is determined to rip the heart out of the audience. As with any emotionally affecting anime, it's generally considered worth watching. Available from Discotech Media. Somewhere between myth and magic you have heroic age. Cribbing a lot from the myths of Heracles, the show features the trials and tribulations of the ship Argonaut as it cruises the universe. The bronze and silver tribes are bent on wiping out humanity and nearly succeeded and the crew of the Argonaut is determined to bring peace to the universe. Finding a strange boy who can summon a giant mecha called a Nodos to do battle, the Argonaut continues to travel to the galaxy to accomplish their mission. Heroic Age certainly has a lot of big ideas behind it and character designs by Hisashi Harai, but the whole product is a little peculiar for a more casual audience. It's licensed by Funimation and currently available in the United States. Appleseed Ex Machina released this year, a follow-up to the CGI Appleseed giving production reins to John Woo, produced an action movie in his style, but Shinji Aramaki's plotting and quirky writing is a somewhat lopsided match. The series is another cyber cop drama with a lot of peculiar fridge logic, but the movie serves its purpose and is a fun if confused work. Of particular note is the upgraded visuals, which are marked improvement over the first film, though by this time the technology was better known. Dubbed by former ADV Films actors, available in the States at time of recording. Armored Troopers Votom's Piles and Files was an OVA series that chronicled the early career of Chiriko Kuve and is notable for its usage of CGI for its mecha. This would be a first for the Votom's franchise. The story follows a recounting of Kuve's commanding officer, how Chiriko is somehow the perfect soldier, though it's clear from the outset that Pileson, the commander in question, is perhaps a little mad. This OVA, along with the rest of the OVA's movies and TV series, have all been licensed by Made in Japan, and the original series is streaming on High Dive. No release date set at time of recording. Commemorating the 40th anniversary of Giant Robo, GR Giant Robo, aired in January of this year. In the 21st century, giant mechanical monsters are running roughshod over the world with no hope in sight. Daisaku Kusama is led to a mysterious island off the coast of Okinawa and makes a contract with the mystical Giant Robo. Taking the machine into battle against the gigantic rebellion operators, he must contend with threats both physical and arcane to defend the planet. The series ran for 13 episodes and took a hard left turn from the original Giant Robo series, replacing tech for what looks to be magic. The series never made it stateside, though with the way things are going lately, there's always hope. Idolmaster Xenoglossia was a peculiar spin-off of the extremely popular Idolmaster series. A hundred years ago, the moon was destroyed, parts of it still enter orbit and fall to Earth combat these competo, a strange pun on the candy of the same name, 
high school singers are recruited to pilot the idle mecha. There aren't enough mechs for all the pilots, however, and it may come to light that the mecha aren't just machines, all wrapped up in an idle master flare. The series is somewhat dull as the mecha action is very limited and only holds so much interest for people who are not interested in idle anime. Like Macross, but played more straight, it's been brought over to the States by Sentai Filmworks. Getting down with the Greek vibe as well, Gigantic Formula fired off this year. After excavating 12 stone heads of Greek gods, a shockwave burns out the equator, and the nations of the world realign to build giant mecha at behest of these stone heads. Using the heads as power sources, the world's wisest war begins. What's so wise about war anyway? All the same, this series featured solid mecha designs and good music, but the story was plotting in all the worst ways. Currently not available in the United States. Musami Obari strikes again with Dankuga Nova. Allegedly a sequel to the old Dankuga series from the 80s, the show follows a new set of pilots with a new set of robots. When a new robot starts up and starts the kind of super robot shenanigans up again, Dan Kuganova springs into action to even the odds. This 13 episode series would put a cap on Dan Kuga, though perhaps not as satisfactorily as some would like. Currently not available in the United States. And that brings 2007 to a close. 2008 is a little dry for Mecha, so next time we'll be combining the two with 2009. But never keep a good year down, as next year also will bring us Macross Frontier, the return to the TV of the venerable series. 